So, you've watched some videos, you've seen the hype, and you've decided you're going to buy Star Citizen. The problem is, now that you've bought it, you have no idea what you're doing or how to get started. Sound about right? Well, obviously you're going to want to make some money so that you can buy yourself some fancy new gear and eventually a fancy new ship, right? With that being said, this video that I've made is going to take you through one of my favorite ways to make money in the game while still having fun and enjoying the experience because, let's be honest, it is one hell of an experience. With that in mind, keep in mind that this video was designed to be most applicable to people who are joining the game for the very first time and have not already acquired their own gear and equipment. Because of this, we will also briefly touch on some of the basics of the game so that you know how to get around. St stuff like basic movement, basic interaction, stuff like that. Sound good? Let's jump into it then. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into this. So we're going to start from the perspective of you are a first time player joining the game for the first time. We're going to be in Area 18 for this example as far as where we chose our persistent, or our, not our persistent, I'm sorry, our primary residence. So if you chose somewhere other than pr Area 18, your habitat that you spawn in for the first time may look a little different than mine, but the general instructions of this video, I guess, will be the same. So when you join the game for the very first time, you're going to spawn in your what's called your habitat. Now, this is basically just a random apartment room. That's the best way to think about it. And eventually, the idea is for them to be persistent, meaning you will have the same apartment at whatever planet every time and hopefully be able to eventually customize them and do things with them. But for the moment, it's just randomly selected. You can't really do anything in here. It just looks pretty. But, with that being said, so when you spawn in for the first time and you load in for the first time, you should look a little something like this. You should be given a free spacesuit or undersuit, a free helmet, a arc light pistol with 30 rounds, and that's all we're going to need for this today's video. So I've tried to replicate this as much as I can. I believe I'm wearing the same suit you spawn with, and I believe I'm wearing a similar helmet. The only real difference is the pistol I'm using. Um, you can't buy the arc light at Area 18, so I just bought a LH-86. This is a ballistic pistol, whereas the arc light is a laser pistol, but the concept is still the same. So you will have an arc light pistol with no extra magazines and 30 rounds in the gun. I have got a LH-86 with a 13 round mag in the gun and then two extra 13 round mags on my person. I just did this to simulate your same circumstances as easily as possible, if that makes sense. So I've got a little more than 30 rounds. You guys will have right at 30. So with that being said, we're not going to stop at a store. We're not going to buy anything. I'm just going to teach you guys how to get right in, make some money pretty quick, and not have to spend a bunch of money right out of the gate. So what we're going to do is we're going to exit our habitat. If you don't already know how to do this, you're going to want to hold F and then click on the open button there, or open prompt. And that you're going to use your F key for pretty well every interaction in Star Citizen. So now we're going to take the elevator here at Area 18's Easy Hab. We're going to call it again, interacting with F. And we'll just wait for it here. It shouldn't take too terribly long. Yep, there we go. And we're going to get in the elevator. We're going to go down to the ground floor. And again, if you chose somewhere else for your primary residence, this, this process is going to be different, but similar. The same basic principles, but the locations are going to be different. Like Microtech, for example, is quite a bit more spread out than Area 18. Uh, same for Hurston. So they're a little harder to navigate, but the concept is the same. So as soon as you walk out of the Easy Hab, or I guess what's actually called the Adira, Falls apartments, you're going to see a couple things. You're going to see the cassava outlet over there, which is where you can buy clothes, which are just appearance items. You're going to see Cubby Blast here, which is where you can buy FPS or personal weapons, attachments, and armor. And then you will see a food vendor here. So if you wanted to, you could hold F to buy a drink and a, what is this, a burrito? But we're not going to do any of that. We're not going to spend any money. So then you're going to see a sign that says Art Court Plaza. So we're just going to go straight here. Kind of walk through this uh, alleyway here. 
And once we're here, you're going to see a couple things. This over here is like a convention center of sorts. That's the trade development division. More on that later. But over here, you're going to see Arc Corp City Flight. That's where we want to go to get our ship. So, keep in mind when I pull the ship, um, it's going to be different than the one you chose, most likely, unless you happen to choose the Drake Cutlass Black Starter Pack. More than likely, you'll probably have, I would assume, either an RSI Aurora or a Mustang. Again, the principles and the... We're going to get on the tram here, by the way. Oh, we missed it. Okay. So again, the principles are going to be the same. It's just going to be a different ship. So when I pull my ship out, you'll do the same with yours. It'll just look different. So now that we came through our, or the uh, city flight there, we're just going to come down here to the tram and wait for the tram. And this tram is going to take us to tram. I call it a tram. I guess they consider it a train. But it's going to take us to the spaceport. And the spaceport is where we will actually be able to pull our ship out get it in a hangar, and take off. So, once the train arrives, all you have to do is you will hop on the train, you know, wait for the doors to close or whatever, and once they close, you'll sit on the flight, or the train, and let it take you to the spaceport, you get out of the spaceport, and it's, it's all easy from there. Trains are basically how Star Citizen handles navigating parts of the map for a lot of the bigger cities or points of interest. So, Area 18 has got this tram or train. Microtech has got their own system of trams or trains. Um, Hurston, Lorville on Hurston has the same thing, tra trams and trains. And Orison has the same thing, trams and trains. So it's just... Basically, on any of the planet sides, main points of interest, so Area 18, Orison, Lorville, New Babbage, they're all going to use some sort of tram or train system to get you from the spaceport to the main city, and then some of them even go as far as to use them to get to various different other parts of the city. So, just keep that in mind. Um, that's why a lot of people prefer to set their primary residence once they're in the game to a space station. Because the various different space stations will have various different shops. Some have armor dealers, some don't. Some have weapon dealers, some don't. But the benefit of setting your primary residence to a space station is if you die or you know you log off there and join back, you don't have to mess with the, tr the trains or trams to get back to the spaceport it's all right there in one spot it's a you spend a lot less time traveling and waiting so a lot of people will eventually set their primary residence to a station purely because of that and when you pull a ship out you don't have to exit atmosphere because you're already out of atmosphere so it's just a little quicker but it's entirely personal preference so we're going to exit the tram here we're going to head into the Riker Memorial Spaceport. We're going to hang right, because that's the only way you can go. And we're going to go through this customs area. Just ignore everything you see. It's basically all decoration. And just kind of follow everything pointing you towards this direction. And now we're at kind of this lobby here. So to the left, you can rent certain ships if you want. And to the right, the VIP lounge. That's basically purely decorational as well. So we're going to go to the terminal here the fleet manager we're going to interact with it with the F again and we're going to see our ship and all we have to do is hit retrieve and it's going to retrieve it and place it into a hangar so it's going to tell us it's it in this case hangar 9 so we're going to run to the back side here and head over to the right to hangar elevators again if you forgot food and water and you know you need it you can grab some here but we're good. We're just going to go and call an elevator. It said hangar 9. Yeah, so we'll call the elevator over. And sometimes these can be super quick. Sometimes they're they're slow. You just got to kind of be patient with them. Sometimes they don't work. Most of the time they do in my experience. There we go. Hangar 9. Again, interacting with all this stuff by holding F and then... Uh, scroll wheel if you want to zoom in 
you can press in on the scroll wheel to focus so that when you actually move the scroll wheel it's not trying to zoom in as well it's a little tip there for you it's gonna take us down here to the hangar boom and what we're gonna do it gave us a really big hangar for some reason but whatever so we're gonna run over to the ship here and again your ship's probably gonna look different that's okay if you bought a starter pack with a a large small ship just meaning a ship that's on the larger end of the small spectrum and it has something like a, a oh what do they call this uh, ramp then you're gonna want to open the ramp to get in it if your ship doesn't have a ramp the easiest way to get in is probably going to be to figure out where the cockpit's at and then hold F and look around for an interaction point. And then once you find it, you should see something like inner pilot seat or something along those lines. And that's how you'll get into those ships. So we're going to get in here. We're going to shut the door. Walk into the cockpit. And we get in our pilot seat. And we're going to press R to enter flight ready mode. And it turns everything on. Then we're going to press I to turn our engines on. And then there's a couple options. We need to communicate with air traffic control to exit the hangar. So the first option is to find one of your multifunction displays here. And if you don't already have one set to comms, you need to go pick, just pick a random one. And click menu and go to comms. And then you can click this little hail button here to get in touch with them. Or you can set a keybind for that under key bindings, advanced customization, and then you find flight and movement. Scroll all the way down and where it says request landing, you can set a keybind that way, which I have mine is set. So we're just going to press that. And you'll see that it, there you go, we're clear to launch. So because this is such a big hangar, I think think the doors are above us yep so we'll give them a second to open and I'm actually gonna third person for this f4 is third person by the way and then when you're in third person you can hold Z to drag the camera around so we're just gonna lift off here we'll feel clear and go back into first person and we're just going to point straight up and we're going to use our scroll wheel to increase our max speed. It's going to be that little red box over there on the left side of the screen. And then we're just going to full throttle with our afterburner, which is going to be shift to try to get out of atmosphere as quickly as possible because we're going to need to quantum travel and we're not capable. You can't quantum travel inside atmosphere. So we'll just keep going straight up here until we get to, we'll say nine, 10,000 meters on our altimeter there. Uh, I say altimeter there. It's the meter on the right side of the screen. And our afterburner is out, so we're just going to let that recharge. And we're at 10,000, so we're just going to let it come back down to zero. So now for the mission, right? We need to start making money. So you're going to open your mobile glass with F2, and we're going to go down here to Contracts Manager. And we're going to go to the Mercenary tab. And we're going to do, the first one we're going to select is this, a call to arms. All this does is give you a 500 Alpha UEC bonus for every criminal or person with a crime stat that you kill. So it's basically free money, and you can always accept it as long as you're a lawful player. So we're just going to take that, and we're going to untrack it because it's not one that needs tracked. And we're going to go back to general up here. And there's a bunch of different missions you can do to start making money. You could do delivery missions, which is basically just you go to this location, pick up a box, and then drop it off somewhere else. That feels very grindy and slow to me, so I don't, I'm not a big fan of those. The next one is these search missions, and they've also got some salvage claims in here. Basically, you go to this wreck site, you pick up what's left that they want, and then you take it to wherever they tell you. There's decent money in those, but again, it feels kind of the same as the delivery, so I'm not a big fan of them. The next one is research. This is kind of a, you don't see these very often. So these are ones you can do if you want, but again, we're going to stick away from those for this video. Next one's investigation. These are another decent one and can kind of be fun, but again, not, not for today's episode. 
Next one's maintenance. This is a similar to the delivery one. You go pick something up and then drop it off or keep it maybe. I think you just keep it if you want to. Um, and then you're done. Again, another video. And then this one's bounty hunting. I think bounty hunting is a little more difficult because it's going to involve ship combat a lot of the time. And if you're not comfortable flying your ship yet because you're a new player, for example, I would try to stay away from these at least until you get comfortable flying your ship. So we're going to go to the mercenary tab and we're going to click this protect site mission. Now I've done protect sites already on this character. So if you are playing for the first time and you haven't, yours might say something like protect site trial contract or something along those lines. It's going to be the exact same contract, just a different name. So we're going to accept that, and all we're really looking for when we accept that is where to go. So Shubin Processing Facility, SPAL 12. Um, so with that in mind, also note that we're doing this for Blackjack Security. It's going to be useful to help you identify friendly targets when we get there. So I know that Blackjack Security's armor is red and black, so we're just going to look for those guys and know not to shoot them. That being said, uh, make sure it's tracked down here. This one is. So now we're going to go to the skyline down here. We're going to double click on Art Corp, double click on Lyria. We're going to find where it says go to Shubin Processing Facility SPAL 12. We're going to click on that, left click. And then we're going to set route. And that sets our quantum travel route. We're going to press F2 to close it. We're going to press B to turn on our quantum drive. We're going to line it up with this target here. Oh, whoops. Sorry, wrong one. This is going to be the first target. It's going to be an orbital marker. So we're going to line it up. Let it calibrate. And then once it's ready, just hold... Oh, that's the wrong button. Hold B to engage your quantum drive. It's just going to shoot us over here really quick. That was a nice quick one. Sorry about the frame right there. Then we're going to line up with... Ooh, it's really choppy. We're going to line up with this next marker here. And again, let it calibrate. We're going to hold B to go to that one. And this route's a little longer, but it's still not very far in the grand scheme of things. Really, the only really long quantum travels you're going to get are from, like, planet to planet. So going from, like, Arc Corp to Hurston or Arc Corp to Microtech, stuff like that. Long distances. And we're going to line up with the third location here, which is going to be the actual processing facility itself. We're going to hold B again. And it's just going to take us about 20, I think it stops at 22 kilometers, yep. So we're 22 kilometers out. The quantum travel can't take us any closer. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring our speed limiter down to like, let's see, we'll do 440 because that should give me enough time to stop in an emergency if we need to. And we're going to head in here. I'm going to press tab just to ping so I can get a good idea of how far I am from the ground just visually. And as we approach here, there's something we need to keep in mind. Um, some places are going to always show up as a restricted area. Some places aren't. Um, it's good practice to always treat every location as a restricted area because some of them can turn restricted while you're in the bunkers. Now you might be asking, well, why does it matter if they're restricted? If an area becomes restricted and your ship is within range of the turrets that are stationed at these facilities, they will start shooting at you. So like this one, for example, the, I haven't picked up a radar lock, which I already would have if this was a restricted area. But because we don't want to risk it, we're going to park our ship somewhere the turrets can't see. So that if the area does go restricted, they can't shoot it. So if we come like up here behind this rock and we basically land, we're going to go ahead and press in to put our landing gear down. If we land like right here, 
a little further out. There we go. We land right here, and we use third person to look. We're probably good, because the turret on the actual bunker should be blocked by that pillar there. So, that's just good practice. Always park where the turrets can't shoot you, because if they can see you and they can shoot you, they there's a, always a chance they might. So we're here, we've landed, we're going to press I to turn our engines off, and then we're going to press Y to get out of the pilot seat. Again, it's always good practice to turn your engines off in case um, a windstorm or something picks up on the planet. If that does happen and your engines are on, for whatever reason, it's very possible that the wind can pick the ship up and take it away, effectively disappearing the ship. Had it happened before, it's not fun, just make it a habit to always turn your engines off. So we have a little bit of a walk now, but that's okay. We're gonna... It's, it's not too far. I've had to park much further before. The landscape kind of played in our favor on this one. So we're gonna walk down here. And the reason I chose mercenary missions is because I think they're fun. I think they're engaging because they get you on the ground. They get you actually fighting people. And they pay decent money, and the max payout as you build your reputation with these different security providers, the max payout gets to be really good. Like, I think once you get to the max level, the missions or the mercenary contracts you can get pay out to, to like somewhere in the neighborhood of 300, 400,000 a job, I think. Don't quote me on that though. So, before we go down here, we're gonna hold, oh, that's the wrong key. We're gonna hold one to open our weapon wheel, and we're just gonna select our pistol. Make sure it's got ammo in it. Ours does. Now we're going to use F to interact and go to sub-level 1. So, as of 317.2, all friendlies should have this marker over their head. But in my experience, they don't always. So don't rely on that. Um, I've come across a couple guys before that are friendly but don't have the marker. So just keep that in mind. I'm not a fan of it because I think if they're going to implement something like that, it, it needs to work properly. Otherwise, it's just a, a uh, not a hurdle, but a, more of an inconvenience. So they're, it looks like they're actively engaged. This guy, I can't tell if he's not a friendly. Just take it slow. Yeah, he's not friendly. So we're going to drop him. So combat's similar to... I would assume kind of anything else you guys have played shooter-wise. Obviously, right-click to ADS, left-click to fire. Control is crouch, X is prone, and then Q and E are to lean. So on these missions, all you do is clear the site of the pirates, basically. So this guy here. There's another one there. I don't want to get ambushed, though, so I'm going to try to pop this guy. I missed him. Oh. Missed that one too. Oh, there's one. Ow, that hurt. Wow, that dude's taking a lot of hits. Alright, he's down. We're gonna go for this other one here. He's down, and then what we're going to do very quickly, before we get snuck up on again, is grab his gun. We're going to F over it and equip, so that we have a nice primary. And then it, uh, it stuck it on our back. That's okay. So now we have a shotgun as our primary. And we're going to go for this guy over here again. Oh, he ran down there. He's running in the walls. We're going to take him out. You notice we got hurt there, but we're okay. So there's three guys left, according to the counter up top. We're just going to be as careful as we can here. There's another one over there. Let's see if we can get a range shot on him. Um, yep, still right there. He is, I'm not sure where he's going. Oh. Around this way, maybe? The AI is still not great in this, I'll be honest. 
so that's even more reason to just take it slow and be careful. I have a habit of like trying to rush these now just because I've done them so many times and I've gotten a little too comfortable with them. There was another one over here somewhere. Unless he's sneaking behind me. Which I am slightly concerned about. Alright, we're going to clear back this way. I actually like this shotgun. It's the first time I've used it. It's pretty good. Okay. So the bottom floor should be clear. We're going to push up this way. Yeah, there's one. Drop him. Should only be one left. Looks like there's one friendly up here too. Alright. That way is clear. We're going to just swing around here. Now that's a friendly. Concern this last guy. Yeah, he's right there. He's down. And that's the end of the contract. It's complete. We won. And we got a bonus for each of those guys that we killed, and then we're going to get our payout for completing this actual contract. So, now what you can do is loot. You can basically be here as long as you want and loot. So, what I would do first is just kind of do a quick check and make sure that the counter was actually right and everybody is dead. And it looks like they are... Just a very quick sweep because it like most of the time when the contract completes they are actually all gone I don't know that I've ever had a situation where they're not but it's still just good practice just to double, double check so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the bottom and loot up so we're back where we came in at so what you're looking for with loot are crates. So this is one of the smaller crates. This is going to have tools and equipment in it. So it's got a pyro multi-tool, some tiger's claws, some knives. We're going to take... Oh, tell you what we need to do first. Armor. We need armor so that we can actually carry some stuff on us. So you have a couple options here. You can take the bad guy's armor. If you like it better, you want to wear that. I don't like wearing it because if I ever get in a PvP situation, I don't want people confusing me for pirates. So, I'm going to look for one of the friendly guys that got killed, and it might have wiped their bodies just now. Oh no, there's one. And we're going to take his stuff, because he obviously doesn't need it anymore. But we could use it. I'm going to leave my undersuit, but I am going to take the rest of his actual armor. We'll even take his helmet, why not? So now we've got this toy pistol, which we're going to drop because I don't want that. We do have a med pin, so we're going to equip those to our belt. You can just do that by um, double clicking on them. I don't really care about these, but they're not taking up a whole lot of room, so we're going to leave them. And then since we're injured, we're going to press C to equip the med pin and just left click to use it on ourselves. There we go. We're back up to full health. And we'll walk around with the pistol. So now that we have armor, what we want to do now, granted, we didn't buy anything, right? So we want we don't have a backpack, but we can take as much as we can. So these tiger claws are useful. You can use those to clear your crime stat if you ever get one in the future. Just I would pick them up every time you see them because they don't hardly weigh anything. Uh, the next thing is going to be this um, pyro multi-tool. Would highly recommend getting one of those with a tractor beam attachment like I've just done. And what that allows you to do is pick things up. So like, uh, let's find a body like this guy. We can pick him up, move him around. And if for whatever reason we wanted to like, I don't know, load him on our ship, you could do that. So they're just, they're useful to have. They're good tools. So there was a container there. Um, let's see if we can find another one yep here's a big one so this is going to be a weapons container so let's see weapons and armor i'm sorry 
So nothing super crazy in here. Again, I mean, take everything you can. These paramed devices are nice to have. Um, that sight I want to take. There's uh, battle rifles, weapons. I mean, again, take everything you can because you can sell this stuff. So at this point, we're just looking to maximize the amount of money we make off of one mission, basically. Um, I'm not really going to be too worried about bodies just for the sake of saving time on this video, but you can loot all the bodies too if you want. Here's another weapons crate. So this one has got a P4 AR rifle, which is actually my probably my favorite assault rifle, so we're going to take that. We're going to take the AR mags, and then once they're on us, we're going to double click them to equip them to our belt so that we can actually use them. And then, let's see, we can't really carry another gun, because we only have two, so two slots, so we're just going to leave that. Again, if you had a backpack or, you know, more time than I want to spend here right now, you could get all as much stuff as you wanted to, really. Oh, whoops. Oh, that's it. not a crate. But the moral of the story is basically just spend as much time here as you want, loot as much as you can or as much as you want to. And anything you don't want to keep, you can sell. And it's just extra money at that point. So we're going to roll out of here. Oh, there's another crate. Let's see what's in here. More Tiger's Claws. We'll take those. Another knife. Uh, that knife you can't sell, so I'm just going to leave it. Another multi-tool. We'll take that. Uh, mining attachment. We'll take that. We'll leave the rest of it. So, to recap, we have just joined the game for the first time, right? We've spent no in-game currency. We've, you know, flown to our first mission, completed it, and now... Oh, I don't know what I equipped, but... Um, and now, we're 15 plus thousand Alpha UEC positive. And we can either take the loot we just got and go and do another one immediately, or we can take the loot we just got and go back to wherever, let's say Area 18, for example, and sell some of it to maximize our profit. It's entirely up to you. Me, personally, I would probably sit here for a couple hours, honestly, and just grind these protect sites out. Just, I enjoy them. I think they're fun. But you're entirely free to do what you want. That being said... This is how I would start your career in Star Citizen. I would start building a reputation for these mercenary jobs because they're only going to pay more the higher your reputation. They're decent money. I think they're pretty fun. They kind of keep you on edge. And, you know, if you start to get bored of, you know, one particular set of planets, so like Arc Corp and the two moons that surround it, fly over to Microtech or Hurston or... Uh, Crusader and start doing mercenary missions there. Your reputation won't transfer over. Your reputation basically only applies to the system you're, or the set of planets that you're working in. But, it's still you know, a change of scenery. So if that's something you want to do, go for it. And, <laughs> that's unfortunate. I got a disconnect there. Um, unfortunately, with the game being in such an early access and alpha state, that's going to happen occasionally. My kind of general rule of thumb is just don't get mad. Understand that you're playing an alpha game and there's going to be bugs. So it's very rare that I get disconnected. And it's also very rare that for me in particular, I crash. So I'm cool with it. It is what it is. I, I got to finish my video. So you guys have seen what to do. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this one. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If you want to see me go into more detail or kind of dive deeper on any of this stuff, again, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I am here for all the Star Citizen content. So anything you guys want to see, just drop it in the comments and we'll work on getting that out for you. With that being said, again, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on the video and maybe even consider subscribing. It seriously, seriously helps me out a lot. And yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.